Hey, we'll get going right away here. Is people still logging on? Okay. Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining QI Power Hour. My name is Riley Woodman, and I'm with the Saskatchewan Health Quality Council. Uh, we recognize uh, quite a few names on the registered list today, uh, so welcome back. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, QI Power Hour is a free monthly webinar learning series hosted by us here at the Health Quality Council in Saskatchewan. Uh, we try to bring together professionals from a variety of sectors with an interest in improving and learning about quality improvement related topics. So all of our sessions are recorded uh, and available on our website. Uh, you can check out past sessions that you may have missed, or you can go check out this one and send it to your colleagues. Uh, we usually post them uh, by the end of the day, or at least the first business day. Uh, while you're on our website, you can sign up for the QI Power Hour email newsletter and never miss another one again. So over the last year, we've seen uh, QI Power Hour grow uh, across Saskatchewan. So take a look, see if we maybe missed your, your logo. Uh, across Canada, and worldwide. So speaking about where people are from, uh, we'll use this as an opportunity to try our chat function. Uh, when we are engaging uh, with Jen today, uh, we'd ask that you do it through the chat, not the Q&A. So if everyone could just try out their chat function right now. Um, it's in the bottom right. Uh, make sure that you're in the chat, not the Q&A, and make sure that you're addressing it to everybody. Uh, and so just right now, if you could put where you're from, um, that'd be great. Saskatoon, Regina, Prince George, Parksville, Victoria Lloyd, TA, oh, flying in here. Chelsea's from Ormond. Windsor, excellent. Hudson Bay. Perfect. Uh, if you'd like to join on the conversation outside of the chat, um, you can always use Twitter. And we ask that you use um, the hashtag QI Power Hour uh, or those two handles. So here at HQC, we like to start off every uh, meeting or event with a land acknowledgement. Uh, the Health Quality Council is situated on Treaty 6 territory in the traditional land uh, of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota, and is the homeland of the Métis. We pay respect to the treaties that were made on this land and acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past. We are committed to moving forward in partnership with Indigenous nations in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So without further ado, um, I will introduce Jennifer Klatt, or I guess I'll, I'll let her introduce herself. Awesome, thank you, Riley, and welcome everybody who is joining us live and welcome to anybody who is um, watching this on the replay. So my name is Jennifer Klatt. Some of you might actually know me as Jennifer Ermentrout. I just in the last couple of weeks just went through a name change. So everywhere you can find me, you can find me now as Jennifer Klatt. And I'm so excited to be here today to talk about coaching. I'm super passionate about coaching, but I'll give you a little tiny short history of just kind of where I came from. Um, I spent, I'm an, I'm an accountant by trade, so don't hold that against me. I am not a typical accountant whatsoever. Um, I, I spent about 12 years in private industry working for some multinational um, companies that were in the property management field and then took a year off to travel Australia in the back of a, and living out of the back of a car, which was the most wonderful thing. And 
once that year kind of ended, I realized I really need to be connected to having a purpose and to really serving people. And it was amazing to be able to really spend some time just really exploring what life was. I really needed to give back. And I started um, back when we came back to Canada, started with the provincial government at the Ministry of Highways. And it I, I was never one of those people who always thought that I would ever go into government. I never thought I would go into government. And it was probably one of the most rewarding careers that, um, that I've had working within government and working as a servant to be able to actually impact the, um, the quality of life of citizens in Saskatchewan. So I spent about I think it was about 10 years at the Ministry of Highway, six of them at um, that kind of senior ADM VP kind of level in government. I was the first woman to sit in one of those seats, which I felt very proud of. At the time, I was the youngest person as well, and I was the first non-engineer who sat in one of those seats. So I felt very, um, felt very green, felt very new, but also was surrounded by amazing people who allowed me to find my voice. And that's really what started me down the coaching path. So I went to Royal Roads and I got my executive coaching certificate. So everything that I'm going to speak to you from comes from the learning of the purity of coaching. And I know that anytime we learn the purity of anything, there is, um, there's that practical side where maybe it doesn't really work in the real world. So for today, what I'm going to take you through is that coaching side of things. And since Highways, I've worked as a CFO at SAS Builds for a year. And for the last going on for entering into my fifth year right now, I've had my own company, Intentionally You Coaching and Consulting, where I do executive coaching. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching with individuals, but I also do leadership development and training. And some of that training passion came from working for three years um, at the University of Regina, teaching public policy back to public servants. So I've had kind of, as you know, went in to be an accountant, had kind of a varied career. So for today, we're going to talk really about coaching. And what I would like is I'll monitor the chat. So if at any point in time you have any questions, please make sure that you put them in the chat. We're going to leave some time at the end to make sure we go through questions. But if there's something that doesn't make sense all the way throughout or you have a different viewpoint on what we're going to go through and any of the points that I'm going to talk about would love to would love to have that engagement with you because anytime I think about any concept um, it doesn't really matter what my viewpoints are it matters what the collective conversation really ends up being so that's what today is about is about that collective conversation to really move forward what um, what coaching really could be. And so today the topic is getting past the hype to discover the power of coaching. Right now in the world, everybody, you know, you turn around and everybody's calling themselves a coach, a life coach, an executive coach, a leadership coach, you know, a spiritual coach. Like there's just coaching has exploded probably in the last five years for sure, but even in the last year where people are really starting to ground and find themselves and find out what coaching is. Even um, even when I was in government six years ago, we were starting to have that conversation around coaching, and it's interesting to see what coaching is and what it isn't. And and when I present to you what it is and what it isn't, I want you to always think about the organization that you're representing or your thoughts around coaching and what it is, because this might just push the dial for you and change some of your perceptions. Um, or you might go, you know what, Jen, that's not what coaching means to me. And the lexicon is so important. So I'm going to use the word coaching in a very specific way, but, you know, uh, I'm not really tied to it. it. You can switch labels up for almost anything. So that's, um, that's what we're going to go through because it's really the power of the conversation, not the label of the conversation. So even in the chat, when you're thinking today about, you know, this next hour, why you registered for today, would love even to hear some of the things that you would like to walk away with, because I will structure the conversation based on what you want to walk away with. So even if you use the chat function to talk about some of that, that would be awesome as I go through. So I start out every one of my trainings or presentations with a picture, and normally, um, in smaller groups, we would actually go around the table to see what comes up for you when you look at this picture. And I love this one. This is one of my favorite pictures to put up because 
I want you to think about when you think about coaching as a label and coaching as a word, what does this picture start to really pop up for you? And I would, like I said, I would normally go around and ask what's coming up for you. If you want to type it into the chat, that would be awesome. But it's, you know, when I look at this picture, I look at it and I think how many different, um, how many different thoughts that we're having in our mind at any point in time and what's really going on that we're made up of all of this matter and all of this energy and it is malleable and it shifts and it moves. So that's what comes up for me. And I look in the chats and some of some of you are saying expanding of the mind helps discover the pieces of yourself, information or ideas. You can receive the complexity of it all. And this is what I love the most is when you look through the chat, you know, real rebuilding, discovery, complication, letting down your guard, re, you know, rebuilding, sense making of a whole ton of information. There is no two comments that are coming back that are exactly the same. So this is the one thing when I'm talking about leadership or coaching is that every single one of us has a different perspective. And this is, you know, this is probably one of the skills that when I think about early on when I was in private industry that I had not honed the skill whatsoever. I thought that, you know, there was one way of thinking, it was my way of thinking, that was the right way of thinking, and that was it. And what I um, what I had been gifted is working with amazing individuals, some of them who had the courage to actually come and talk to me and approach me to say, you know what, Jen, like, not everybody is like you. And I think that when we sit back and, and know that and can feel into that, we we can we can see it. But sometimes in that heat of the moment, what we see really um, and what we think really guards our experience of the world. So again, like even looking through the comments, you know, a fire hose of information, which might actually represent the whole entire hour that you're going to spend with me, a fire hose of information. So um, loving, loving the chat. Thank you very much for engaging because that's, this is how I normally do presentations is through the engaging side of things. So I don't get to see your wonderful faces, but having that chat, thank you very much for, for engaging with that. And so this is how I start everything is just really opening your mind to what the possibilities could be and remembering that there's completely different perspectives on what coaching is, what coaching isn't, the power of a coaching conversation. And so that's where we'll really dive in. And as we're going through the presentation, I want you to think about what is one thing that you really want to, that you want to shift, that you want to walk away with. In an hour, there's going to be a ton of information. What I want you to do right now is really set your mind to being open to the information, but to really um, anchor on to the one concept that you really want to take action on. And the one concept that you either want to learn more about or you really want to shift within yourself to take action on because what we what we do end up doing is we try and take all the information and even just like this picture we try and take all the information and decipher all of it but what i want you to do is i want you to focus on one of those um one of those little squares to be able to expand for yourself so the power of coaching like this comes from a 2017 um, International Coaching Federation Consumer Awareness Study. And this, um, it, it came from a, a study that was done all across Canada and all across the world, actually. So the International Coach Federation is a governing body for coaches, and it's something that's a voluntary. So as you're thinking about coaching as if you're looking for a coach within your organization or for yourself, there's different um, there's different levels of coaches, there's different standards of coaches. There's people who have a lot of life experience with um, with little education around coaching. There's lots of people who have little life experience, little education, lots of life experience, lots of education. Um, and so when you're thinking about it, the governing body of the International Coach Federation Oh, I just see that it's um, that you're having an echo. Maybe I'll try and turn my volume down a little bit. Um, so when you think about the International Coach Federation, which is that governing body um, of coaching, that's something that I've chosen to be in. So what they've said, the power of coaching is improved communication skills, increased confidence, increased productivity, 
optimized individual and team performance and improved work-life balance, which I think is amazing when you can really harness what the power of a coaching conversation does. These are, these are, a, this is, comes from a study done on the coaching industry from organizations who actually use coaching within their organization. So that's how I love to start this. And if anybody wants any more about the International Coach Federation, you can Google International Coach Federation or ICF. There's local chapters in Saskatchewan, but there's also the global, um, the global site. So what is coaching and what is not coaching? So again, this is gonna come back to, you know, the purity of coaching and there's hybrids to everything. There's different conversations for everything. But when I think about coaching, it's all about getting to action. So if we're just having a conversation and there is no action at the end, it's just a nice conversation and there's nothing wrong with those. Those are really powerful conversations as well. But the coaching conversation directs and drives the other individual towards action. It's about maximizing the potential within somebody. It's through questioning and just holding space for an individual to help them discover their own path. So if you look at the... Um, at the left hand of your screen, that's what coaching is. And then on the right hand is what coaching is. And so you can kind of see how we can compare and com contrast. So it's about getting to action, but it's not about giving advice or direction. So I'll just go through what it, what it is. And if anybody else, um, you know, if anything's coming up for you on what coaching is, what it isn't, or what your mindset is around what coaching is and what it isn't, I would love for you to put that in the chat because there's so many different models of coaching. You know, when I said when I was in government, they, they talked about coaching, but it was really a mentoring kind of relationship. So when you think about coaching, it's about holding space for somebody and letting them discover their own path. So it's not about giving advice. It's not about showing somebody the path. It's really about understanding the truth within a person. And as a coach, it's all about holding the other person as capable on having a knowing that they know the answer, that they know the direction within themselves. Coaching is about exploring possibilities. So helping somebody move from that um, from that ingrained kind of really narrow focus point of thinking to see a bunch of different options, um, right? It's not about giving your opinion or telling somebody how to do something. That would be advice. That would be counseling. That could be consulting. So also it's coaching is about moving towards an action that that gives you a specific outcome. It's about challenging the process. It's about that, you know, lovely A word that everybody wants to talk about, accountability. And it's about listening to understand. And so when you think about the, what it's not, and we have some in the chat, it's not about giving direction or advice. It's, it's not through showing somebody what your experience was and, and showing them the path based on where you went. That is, that's purely mentoring. Coaching is not training, it's not counseling or therapy, it's not judging anybody where they are and sh telling them where they should be, it's not about making assumptions for the best course of action that somebody else should take, and it's not about leading somebody where you think is best for them. So when you think about what coaching is and what it isn't, um, Lana, you also said, you know, it's about providing a safe space, and I think that that's a really important word that we're going to talk about a little bit later, providing a safe space for somebody to practice, test new skills, new mindset. That's, that's exactly it. And that safe space means without judgment, without, um, without, you know, having that idea in your head of where they should go. So when you look at you know, this slide of what coaching is and what coaching isn't, is there anything that for anybody here who has had experience or ha maybe hasn't had experience of coaching that um, that really is maybe pushing the boundaries or maybe wasn't what you thought coaching was? Would love to hear it in the chat. And there's a question, how do you reconcile coaching and collaboration? I love that question. Thank you for that. And when you think about coaching and collaboration, what I'm going to ask a question back to you, what does each one mean to, to you? You know, to me, this is what coaching means to me, and collaboration means working together to solve a problem 
um, together where both people's um, inputs and opinions and ideas can come to a joint solution that people are going to take to, together. So I think collaboration is, is a little bit different, but, and, it, and again, the lexicon is so interesting in this world because all of our understandings of words comes from our experience. And so this is what I would say to you, Heather, in response to that question is, make sure that when you're going into a conversation, there's a joint understanding of, of what the conversation is. If you're going into a coaching conversation, usually somebody is holding space for somebody else to work through some, something. And collaboration um, to me would be that two individuals are, you know, working through a joint, a joint problem or a joint situation or a joint idea together. Yes, Sarah, the line between coaching and mentoring seems like it's very, very easy to cross. It is very, very easy to cross. I did a, um, I have a little worksheet that it's called the coaching mentoring continuum. So there's, there's lots of things on that, that continuum where mentoring usually is somebody that has already walked and ha walked the path that somebody else has and they're looking for experience. And, and when I said at the beginning, I talk about the purity of coaching, my coaching practice blends all of it. It blends coaching, it blends training, it blends mentoring, it, it blends consulting all together. So when, when I pick each one of the pieces apart, what coaching is, what mentoring is, which is, you know, helping lead somebody down the path, especially if they have not been down that path. So this is what I want to say about coaching and mentoring. Coaching is really about an individual who, who has the answer within them. Mentoring would be an individual who might have an idea, but has never, has never walked up that path before. So it would be more like, um, Somebody in an organization, if you're looking to move up, there, there might be things that you're just not aware of, and it is a very easy line to blur. Um, and I think that with permission, um, it's, it's really okay to cross that line. And, and, it, and I always come back to, it depends also on the culture of your organization and what you're trying to do with coaching. So any of you, how many of you actually have coaching within your organization right now, some sort of formal or informal coaching within your organization? Um, and I'll just wait for that in the chat as I read a couple of other ones. Um, I love that the descriptor is empathy. Empathy is very, very important. And that is really creating that safe space that somebody else early, um, earlier mentioned. And yes, I see shifts between coaching and mentoring and performance management. And I do want to talk about performance management um, in the realms of coaching because performance management, when we have an employee who or a staff member who is underperforming, we sometimes use the language of we're going to coach you, we're going to use coaching. And I really want to, um, from, again, the purity of coaching, stay away from that language because if somebody's underperforming, there is a very different conversation for when somebody is underperforming. And I like that. Um, mentoring is more talking and coaching is more asking and listening. Very, very true. Um, so lots of you have coaching, um, has, have experienced coaching before, maybe not formally, but you know that exists within your organization. So this is this is just kind of setting the stage for it. And what I um, what I like is is which leads into it is not every conversation is a coaching conversation. So the the comment that around performance management this is this is what I want to remind individuals is sometimes when organizations start talking about a coaching organization or a coach approach to working with their teams and with um, the their staff that all of a sudden every conversation is a, a freaking coaching conversation and that is so far from the truth small amounts of conversations that you're going to have every day with your teams with your colleagues are going to be coaching conversations um, and so i just want to remind everybody that there is also conversations where you are reminding people that you have an employee family assistance program if somebody is really struggling 
and they're coming to you for maybe a coaching conversation, but you know, they're dealing with something that is very stressful in their life, maybe a loss of a loved one, maybe themselves or somebody that they know is dealing with addiction. If there is, you know, huge changes in family dynamics at home, there is a real, um, there's a real push to be able to have a conversation with them to remind them that there is programs within your organization that they have access to benefits to remind them about their empl your employee family assistance program, remind them about counseling or therapy or psych being able to speak to a psychologist. So that is not coaching. That's not a coaching conversation. There are trained experts to be able to, who have education to be able to really manage some of those really um, heartfelt, sticky situations. Pro uh, coaching is not a performance management conversation. And when we start to blend and mix those up, it starts to send mixed messages. And this is something that I've found in um, just being in the corporate world, being in the government setting, as well as working for five years with um, with individuals on coaching, we we sometimes want to avoid having the hard conversations. And I don't know if I don't know how many of you are out there that you know shy away from difficult conversations or shy away from conflict type conversations. And if that is you, I just want you to check within yourself and just you know this is this is an opportunity to just be honest with yourself. You can put it in the chat if you want, but you don't have to. But just to check in to see if you avoid hard conversations, because this is. Um, Normally, this is what happens, and then we start to be nice and say, well, we're going to coach you, and we never actually tell people that we are going to put you on a performance management plan. We want to make sure you have the skills and understand the expectations to do your job, um, and so we coach it with nice language, and we never get to the point. And so coaching conversation is not about skills development. It's not about mentoring. It's a very different conversation. And I agree, sometimes our coaching conversation can blend into these other types of conversations, but, um, but, not, but not always. And this is where understanding the context of the conversation you're having is really, really important. And I do some leadership training on really preparing um, mentally and energetically for what type of conversation you need to have. So if you're preparing for a conversation that is about setting expectations or giving somebody direction or giving them feedback, your energy and your body language and how you show up um, is, is going to look very different than when you're going to show up for a coaching conversation. For a coaching conversation, you want to be a lot more open and Curious. Curiosity is really that key to the coaching conversation. And I like that. Um, it is, isn't it human nature to avoid hard stuff? I think so. I think there's a lot, you know, when I think, when I think about the conversations I have, that is the tendency is for us to avoid conversations that make us uncomfortable. And this is one place I want to, I want to push you a little bit is to go, okay, there's, if we're going to have what we would deem to be, you know, air quotes, hard conversation, um, how hard is it to live with not having the conversation for days, weeks, months, decades? I've seen that in organizations where, you know, they didn't have the performance management conversation. They wanted to use coaching language. And decades, decades went by, and they were still upset about the underperformance of individuals because we don't have the right conversation with the right energy. Um, and so a lots of different conversations, feedback, if we're seeking feedback or giving feedback, that's very different than what we had in the previous slide around helping somebody get to action and helping them uncover their potential within themselves. Um, yes, it's not harder to have the hard conversations. I think it's truly harder to live in that, you know, mild discomfort for a long period of time than to have that, you know, maybe that peak of a, um, Difficult, and I don't, I don't think they're difficult conversations because I love those conversations, but um, 
but it's it's really very different. So there's different direction conversations, and there's there's conversations to build trust and um, relationships. So all of those are very different than what we talked about in the previous slide around what coaching is and what coaching isn't. And yes, um, a comment, it's easier dealing with the fallout of communicating with somebody who can't manage themselves or is it an incredibly poor communicator where you can't establish a common understanding? And some of these take time. So when you think the basis of any conversation and any relationship that you have, the basis is, is you know, creating, like somebody had mentioned in the comments before, that safe space. And that safe space starts with trust. It starts with openness. It starts with a, a space of curiosity and non-judgment. And if we can't get into that space for our colleagues, for our teammates, for our teams, then it's going to be really hard for them to, to trust us. So I, I think that there's, there's a lot around this. And in, you know, a short hour, um, I just, I really want in this short hour for it to pique your interest to, to see within yourself where you want to dive more in because this coaching conversation, you know, I, the training I went to was nine months of full on, um, full on training. So you're going to get a little, you know, like somebody said at the beginning, I'm going to feed you with a fire hose a little bit. Coaching seems to be about building awareness of one's potential. It, it really, that is a really good way to sum it up. Um, many people and leaders cannot build um, that environment, and I agree that environment of trust is so important. But I want you to always think, you know, this is this is one thing that I speak about lots. Leadership isn't about you, but it starts with you. So every single person in your life, you are a leader. Leader is, leadership is also not about positional power, and coaching isn't about positional power either. So it always starts about analyzing who we are at the core and how we're showing up. So when is the coaching conversation beneficial? And this is really the heart of it. You know, the, the first point, when somebody is aware, open, and agrees to be coached, I have been in, um, I've been in settings where, um, in meetings where individuals have said, you know, well, I'm just, you know, I said those remarks because I wanted to coach that individual. And I said, well, you know, that individual, A, didn't want to be coached, didn't want to be coached by you, and didn't agree to be coached. So it's not a coaching situation, and it's not a coaching conversation. So I think that there needs to be a real awareness of when you're in a coaching conversation for there to be agreement on both sides of that table and both sides of the conversation that you are actually engaging in a coaching conversation right now. And I don't mean to bring a formality into anything because I am the least formal person ever, but if somebody doesn't know that they're being coached, they're not being coached, just plain and simple. Um, they're not being coached. Um, when is it beneficial? It's when they're in a space that they can make choices and decisions about their future action. And that what I mean by this is if somebody is stressed out and they're at a stress, their stress limit of 100% or 80% or 60%, we are not making good rational choices when we are filled with stress. We are, our body has cortisol racing through our veins when we're in that fight, flight, and freeze mode. And when we're in that mode, we're not open to a coaching conversation. We just need to calm the heck down first to be able to then be able to receive a coaching conversation. Um, and so I see a question in here. When we have a conversation with somebody who reports to you and who can sh truly show up in a coaching mindset to have a coaching on purely non-judgmental, that is when coaching is beneficial. You know, how do we, and I don't know about you, and again, another opportunity to just check within yourself right now is, how often do you judge yourself? How often do we have that critical, you know, voice that peck, 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 pecks in our head that tells us we're not good enough, that we're not doing enough, that there's more to do, that we're not getting to do our to-do list. If we have that pecking voice 
in our head all of the time, it's going to be really hard for us to not be in judgment of somebody else because we're in pure judgment of ourselves at that point in time. So if we're in judgment of ourselves, you know, we're not going to necessarily be open to um, open to that um, coaching conversation or open to being a coach for somebody else. Question. Um, how do you ask somebody if they want to meet for a coaching conversation, especially if they don't know what coaching is? And so you all have access to the slide deck as well. So you can use these slide decks to be able to explain to somebody what coaching is, what coaching is, and, and to invite them if they want to be part of a coaching conversation. I always think that permission is the best thing is um, is to ask them, you know, if coaching would be beneficial to them, this is what coaching is, this is what it isn't, and to invite them into that conversation. So and when is a coaching conversation beneficial? If they're ready and committed to taking action and doing something differently. And so this, this goes into that question that you had asked about, you know, how, how, do, how do you want to invite them to that coaching conversation if they have um if they don't have any goals right now if they don't want to make changes if they don't if there's nothing that they want to do differently in their life and they're completely happy and content um they, they might not be into or ready for a coaching conversation coaching conversations you know isn't for everybody and it isn't for everybody all of the time there's, you know, for me, I go through periods of time where I have a coach and some periods where I don't have a coach because, you know, being coached takes work. It takes effort. It takes effort to change our mindset, to challenge our own, you know, BS stories that we have uh, about where we are and how we want to grow. It takes effort to do things differently and to try things and to screw them up and to go through the plan them, to do them, to check it, to adjust it. That's really you know, when you think about the plan, do, check, and adjust um, cycle, that's what coaching is. It's having somebody on the other end to help us navigate through that cycle, which is iterative. We keep going through it and through it and through it until we get it, until we get it right. Yes, a coaching relationship needs to be based on curiosity on both sides. It, it, it really is. It's about those two individuals sitting on, you know, as the coach or the coachee to be really open and curious. If a coach is open and curious, but the coach, the person who wants to be coached is very, you know, closed off and, you know, doesn't agree with the process, you're probably not in a coaching conversation. So this is where I go back to the last slide where not every conversation needs to be, should be a coaching conversation. And not everybody who is in an organization needs and or wants to be coached. But when somebody does, you know, does want to um, be coached and is open to that conversation, it is so powerful to be able to have somebody challenge their assumptions, challenge their beliefs, you know, their, their stories in their head or what they believe in their head, challenge them to step beyond where they are into taking those future actions to be able to live into their potential. Um, the coacher needs to have walked the path of the coachee. I think that, um, you know, I think that that's, a, I, that's an interesting um, point. And this is, this almost comes back to me when the boss needs to be the expert in everything that needs to be done. I don't think that from a purity standpoint of coaching, I don't think that a coach needs to have walked in the, into the path of a coachee. I think that from a mentoring relationship, absolutely having walked that path already, but I don't think that the coacher needs to walk that path. And again, that's, that's my opinion. And I love the comment because again, with that very first slide of all of the squares coming off of the person's head, we all have very different perspectives that really are accumulation of our experience, of our education, of, you know, our environment that we're in right now, what we read, it's, it's a combination of how much sleep we got, how much water we've drank. It's a combination of all of those things. So um, some coaches are amazing coaches for that exact reason. And some coaches that I've had have not walked in my path whatsoever and have really asked amazing questions because they haven't walked in my path. They haven't been the expert and they didn't get stuck into those same kind of, um, you know, rabbit hole traps that I got stuck in. And they were really the ones that helped me kind of excel past where I was at. Conversations peer-to-peer -peer coaching. 
Um, there's lots of tips as, as long as peer to peer, I think is the most powerful coaching because there's not that direct um, hierarchy of employee employer um, relationship where you can actually be open. You can ask questions from a place of true curiosity. And as long as you're setting the context and the parameters up front um, on how you want to actually show up for each other, it's, it, it can be such a powerful relationship and conversation. But again, coming back to, you know, the slide, being aware, being open, agrees to be coached. And so setting, setting those rules and setting those guidelines ahead of time of what's okay, what's not okay, and, and would be very important in, in peer to peer coaching. When is coaching beneficial? When people are ready for change and wanting something more in their career and their life. It's always about, you know, wanting more. And sometimes a coaching conversation starts because somebody else has recognized potential, you know, potential within us that we maybe didn't realize ourselves. And that's, and I love those conversations where you can just start being open to, to really living into your potential. Um, and they have an understanding in a, and the skills that they're achieving in their current position. This comes back to coaching is not a performance management conversation whatsoever. Coaching is all about um, when somebody is performing well in their job, they have the expectations, they understand the vision and the mission of the organization. They know how what they're doing is supporting that and they have the skills and the understanding to be able to do their current job. Coaching is about being able to take that next step to be able to live into more of their potential. I'm loving the comments that are coming in, living into your potential. And so if keep asking questions. This, um, this works really well for me. I hope this is working for you when the questions are coming up and I, and the comments and then I read them out. So, this is the coaching conversation. This is really this triangle. Starting at the bottom of the triangle is really about, you know, my five steps to a coaching conversation. And we started, somebody had mentioned that up front, creating the space. That's the most important um, part of that coaching conversation is creating the space. And this is, these are some of the things that I want you to think about when you think about creating creating the space and creating the space when I come back to leadership isn't about you but starts starts with you the same thing applies to coaching coaching isn't about you it's about the other person but it always starts with the energy that you are bringing to that conversation and so when you think about creating the space what did you do to prepare prepare for the coaching conversation did you you know have you turned your phones off? Have you created a space for you to actually mentally be able to be open um, and mentally be able to actually hold space for somebody else? Because it takes, it takes effort and energy to hold space for somebody else. So creating the space is how are you preparing for that conversation, but also how are you inviting your coachee to prepare for that conversation? I've had many conversations over the years where you know, I've taken, you know, the 15 minutes to to ground myself because, as you can tell, I'm, you know, maybe a little bit high energy and ha an, an extrovert. I love to think out loud, so I am an audible thinker. And when I come into a coping conversation, I really like to shift my space and, and ground myself so I can slow the heck down because I really need to slow down to hold space for somebody else to fill, fill their energy in the room. And so I have to prepare that space to open that coaching conversation for somebody else. Um, something about um, also opening the space is talking about confidentiality. Confidentiality in coaching is so important in creating that safe space. So the first conversation to have with anybody is, what does a safe space look like for the person being coached? And they may not have the answer to that right off the top of their head, but this really invites that trust, that openness in that very first conversation, because if somebody is not in a space that's safe, then it's really hard for them to open up to look beyond their current level of thinking, to look beyond the perspective that they have in that moment 
And so grounding, yeah, I do the same thing. That's what I have right now, putting my feet on the floor. I also put my feet on the floor and because I'm a little bit of a, um, I'm a little bit of a hippie, I also picture the energy coming from, you know, the earth from outside because for me, nature is the best place that I can get grounded. So I just really picture nature um, being able to surround me so that I can be in service of the other person. So creating that space is really all about you. Coaching isn't about you, but creating the space really is because if you are um, in a space that is, you know, scattered or that nervous or excited energy and all over the place and um, can't really slow down, that's not going to be an inviting space for somebody else to be able to slow down. And so safety and comfort, very two different things being that, you know, that conversation around psychological safety is huge. And then, you know, once you've created the space, then you can actually open the conversation for what the other person really wants to work on. And this is, again, the difference of the purity of the coaching conversation is all about having that other person really um, drive where the conversation is going to go. And so who is in the driver's seat of the conversation is really important in the coaching conversation. It is not the coach. The person in the driving seat of the coaching conversation is the person being coached because they're going to tell you where they want to go. They're going to tell you what they need. And, and, then, and then what your job is as a coach is to go up that kind of pyramid to be able to listen. And again, to create that space where there's no distractions, where there's no, you know, how often do these things go off every five seconds to be able to really be in a space so that you can listen to understand versus listen to respond. And I was doing training um, last week and it was, it was great because somebody had said, I can't remember who had um, said the quote again, but if we were to only to listen to somebody to understand them with the same energy we wanted them to understand us, we would just be in a much more, um, much better situation. So active listening is really important on the coach's part because this is where you can challenge their process, you can challenge their thinking, you can challenge their perspective, you can ask them um, questions that will get them to think beyond their you know, mental boundaries and their mental container and beyond their comfort zone. You know, there's a comfort zone of where we operate in and coaching is about getting outside of that comfort zone and doing something differently. And what happens is when we go outside our comfort zone, we go, oh, holy crap, something's going on. And we quickly duck back in. And so this is where the coaching conversation is powerful because it's that built in accountability to be able to talk to somebody in that safe space. And again, it's a coaching conversation all about honing to action, all about getting to action. And you can see as you go from bottom to top, it's cleverly, you know, the C-O-A-C-H. So creating the space. So it spells coach. Um, that's, you know, my little accountant process in me that I, I like, like it to spell a name. So that's, a, that's really setting the stage very quickly um, for what the coaching conversation is. But that bottom rung, that bottom creating the space, that is where you come in. And so there's a great comment. This discussion sets coaching up as a very intentional act on both sides. It really is, which is why I've named my company Intentional You. Intentionality and being really clear about how we want to show up and the energy we want to bring to a conversation is the most important thing for both parties. Um, you know, my partner right now, what he, I love how he says it, you know, it takes it takes two hands to clap. So it takes two people to have a conversation. It takes two people to set up what those um, boundaries are within that conversation, within that coaching context. Um, and it does, you know, when you get to challenging the process, like I said, coaching conversation isn't always comfortable. It, um, it, it really takes vulnerability on that side of the coachee to really come with all of their you know, BS of what's holding them back so that somebody else can, you know, show them a different perspective and enlighten them as a coachee based on, you know, based on what they're seeing and some of those things that are holding us back. 
the conversation, so I'm just going to read this out because it's, it's great. Um, provide, provide another per perspective. Some of the best, most enlightening experience as a coachee have been more emergent and never started with formal knowledge that I was in a coaching conversation, which, which is interesting. And so some people, they just have that innate ability to hold space for people that is in that openness, that curiosity and non-judgment space for people. And so this, this today has been talking about like that very formal coaching conversation, but there is an informality to coaching. And there's some people who are just wonderful at, um, at holding that space and, and challenging people. And so she didn't know it would happen until it was over, which I love. And it was a curiosity. Again, that word curiosity is so important in coaching. And so this is just a quick snippet of, um, of the coaching conversation that starts with you showing up in that energy of openness, non-judgmental curiosity, and, and having no distractions to be able to truly help somebody um, through questioning get to, you know, get to the action that they're wanting to, wanting to do. And so what can you do? Um, what can you do to enhance your coaching skills? So these are just some things that I really thought for myself, what I did to continue to grow, you know, as a coach. And I, I truly think that as individuals, as leaders, as, um, as just as human beings, we're always growing, we're always learning, and there's an infinite capacity of where we can go. So I always think that we're always enhancing our coaching skills. Um, and so listening with an intention to understand, if, if we can start honing this in every conversation, this does not need, this is, that point is not um, solely for a coaching conversation, that is for every interaction that we have to listen with an intention to understand versus listening to an intention to respond. And um, when I think about the world right now, think, of, think about just, I don't want to dip out of this coaching conversation, but think about what the heck is going on in the world right now. We're throwing, we're throwing crap over the fence to be able to respond, to be able to to tear people down. And you know, when we when we start to want to really grow into our coaching and leadership skills, listening with an intention to understand is um, is a really important thing that you can do to hone that coaching skill and. Everything starts with that intention. And as I said at the very beginning of the conversation, to think about the one thing that you want to be able to do to really take your skills to that next level. And so the next one is expanding your emotional intelligence capacity. So somebody had mentioned empathy before and, you know, to really expand your capacity to be able to read other people's body language. It starts with, you know, tone with their body language, with their, you know, the words that they're using, are they open, are they closed? When we think about communication and how we're communicating with, you know, these things and through emails right now, we're only getting 7% of the conversation. Um, we're getting just the words and we're inferring everything else of those, you know, those electronic conversations based on how we feel, we're missing the intent of how somebody else felt when they were writing it and what they're doing. So tips for expanding emotional intelligence capacity, it starts with intention. It starts with really, truly, you, you know, you can Google it. You can Google it to start putting different thoughts in your mind around what emotional intelligence is, what it's not, but then choosing one action to get really deliberate every single day about creating the space. So if you're somebody like me who likes to talk a lot, it might be sitting back in meetings more and observing what's going on, what the body language is in other individuals and, and seeing if there's congruency, if the words that they're saying matches what, um, what the energy that they're giving out is. And I talk a lot about energy because we're a very energetic being. So energy to me is, is really that kind of bottom rung of understanding emotional intelligence. It's, it's getting past the words and getting to, you know, what, what is that energy? What is that vibe that, that you're putting out? And I think we've all been in rooms where one individual walks in and all of a sudden, 
all of the energy leaves the room because they're grumpy and they've had a crappy day and they bang their book down on their desk. And, and, you know, we've all been in rooms like that. Well, understanding that energy and just sitting back and observing it can be a really good first step of expanding your emotional intelligence capacity. And there's some free tests, like you can Google free emotional intelligence tests um, quizzes online just to kind of see where you're at, but it starts with self-awareness from an emotional intelligence capacity. And so you look at even this whole conversation, it starts with yourself. I think I've said it four or five times, you know, leadership coaching isn't about you, but starts with you. It starts with your energy. It starts with your intention. It starts with how you're taking care of yourself. Did you get rest? Are you drinking enough water? Are you fueling your body and your mind and moving your body? Those are like the most important tenets of um, understanding ourselves is, is really giving ourselves that self-care to be able to really um, start to understand other people because if we don't understand ourselves, and take care of ourselves, we can't understand anybody else. So other things you can do is enhance your trust in relationships um, and start having conversations about what trust is, what it isn't, because there is, um, there is so many definitions of what trust is. And it's interesting when I start working with individuals in, in organizations and about what trust is, because just like that very first picture of the person's head with all of the boxes going, you know, everybody's definition of trust is just like that. It's very different. So even starting to understand um, understand what trust is and what it isn't is important. And you can explore higher levels of just being curious, being curious by looking around. You can be curious right now and just look around your room that you're in and notice things that are differently and starting to hone that skill of noticing things is it can be really important in building curiosity and, and starting to build that muscle of being open and ask more questions with intent to understand that curiosity again um, asking more questions can really hone some of those skills so those are some of the things that you can do to enhance your coaching skills so um, I've been, I've seen that there's, I think I answered most of the questions throughout, but is there, um, I just want to open it up for any more questions that anybody had. And some things I want you to think about is, you know, is it, what was your biggest aha or reframe for, your, for you because of today? And if there's only one thing that you can think of differently because of the conversation today, what would that be? And if there's one action that you're committing to from today, because I, I never want, you know, you, you've committed an hour of your time and been engaged and thank you for that. Thank you for that engagement. I really think that that's so important to be really, if we've chosen to spend our time here, to not just be here in body, but to also be here in mind. So what's that idea that's staying with you? And um, would love to hear in the chat or if there's any other questions before I know Riley's gonna pop on right away and, uh, and to get his uh, cane out and uh, rip me from the stage soon. So, um, yeah, start asking himself before a conversation, what type of conversation, like that's, that's huge. Um, asking what type of conversation, improving listening with intent. Um, love the physical, emotional, social, and spiritual curiosity. You know, we're multifaceted beings and we have all of these things that come into who we are. Um, Yes, it's not about you, but it starts with you. And so there's so many different places that you can follow me. If there's if there's any more questions, would love to um, would love to entertain them. But you can follow me. Um, my website is an intentionalu.ca, but I'm on LinkedIn under Jennifer Klatt. You can friend me on Facebook at Jennifer Klatt. I have intentionalu.ca on. Um, on Facebook, you can follow me there. I do lives and trainings there. I also have a self, um, self care for the driven leader group under my intentional use. So you can connect with me so many different ways. Um, send me an email as well and you can find that on my website too. I didn't see any other questions that were popping in, Riley. Is there any other ones that you saw that, um, that I missed throughout the, uh, throughout the feeding everybody with a fire hose presentation? No, I think uh, I think you got most of them. Uh, Chelsea putting uh, the links in right now for them to uh, follow you um, or reach out later. Um, so, Chelsea, can you give me back the ball? 
Um, I do yeah. also want to say, Riley, if anybody's looking for a coach, you know, I have some spots that have opened up for coaching. So if anybody's actually looking for a coach, you know, I, I you can go onto my website. I have a free 30 minute discover if we're a fit for each other to be able to to work. And I also do within organizations do coach training. So if anybody's looking within their organization to do that, I've done that for about three or four different organizations gone in and helped them set up a coaching um, coaching training within their organization. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. Uh, I think that was the easiest Q and power hour I've ever hosted. Um, just easy is good. Uh, I will um, I will send out an offer for people if they would like one of these. I, I'm modeling it. You can see it. Uh, QI or HQC masks. Um, all you have to do is become a QI Power Hour speaker, like Jennifer. Uh, and Jennifer will be receiving one in the mail. Uh, go onto our website to to learn more about that. Um, in the spirit of quality improvement, and this is an important one. Uh, when you log out of this, you will sh uh, you'll get this message um, to take you to an external site. It's a good thing so that you can. Uh, offer us feedback on QI Power Hour or offer Jennifer feedback on her presentation. Um, so please click continue and fill out our survey. It takes a fraction of a second. Um, and we don't have uh, a specific one right now, but please join us in January. Go check out our newsletter uh, so that you can be informed. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Bye. Thanks, everybody.